How's it going everyone? Today I'm here with my WWE United Kingdom Championship Tournament Day 2 review. Of course, this is the final day of the two-day tournament to crown the inaugural WWE United Kingdom Champion. And before I get into Day 2, I forgot to mention in my Day 1 review that after uh, the tournament matches, after the final round uh, first match, they had a coronation. Well, not really a coronation, but a presentation on the stage where Donald McGinnis and Michael Cole introduced the uh, participants in the quarterfinals. And during that, Pete Dunn attacked Sam Gradwell, uh, pretty much setting up their match for uh, today's show. So just a little thing that I want to mention. Regal came out, broke it up. Regal got into uh, um, Pete Dunn's face, which was great. So that happened after the uh, the final round match, uh, the first round. So I forgot, I forgot to mention that in my, my uh, day one review, so I thought I'd mention that here. So uh, going into day two, um, you know, coming out of it, I should say, I thought this was a hell of a lot better than day one. I thought every match delivered. I thought every match was really good. We had two great matches in a match of the year contender already. Uh, so great night two. Definitely um, was a lot more fun than night uh, our day one, I thought, in my personal opinion. And um, yeah, one hell of a show. Uh, I thought everyone delivered here. And two stars were made. Uh, no doubt about it. Two guys came out of this tournament. Everyone looked great on uh, day two, but definitely two guys, of course, ended up being the finals. Um, they, those two came out like stars, and, you know, it was just, it was fantastic. And, you know, again, great fielder, great vibe. Cole and Nigel McGuinness were great on commentary once again. Those two need to be a permanent team somewhere. I don't care where. They just need to be a permanent team because those two are, they have great chemistry together, and I really enjoyed uh, their commentary on this show. Uh, but yeah, let's jump right into the show. Of course, it's opened up with the uh, first quarterfinals round match, which was uh, Pete Dunne versus Sam Gradwell, of course, playing off of what happened after day one uh, when uh, Pete Dunne attacked Sam Gradwell. So they jump right into that first match to pretty much, you know, get these two, like, you know, you both want to go at it, just open the show. Um, you know, the match was good. I thought it was, you know, uh, it was fine. It was really short. There was only about four or so minutes. Uh, Pete Dunne uh, was pretty much just getting his ass beat by the majority of the match by Sam Gradwell. You know, Sam Gradwell doing some nice European uppercuts, did a nice suicide dive on the outside uh, before getting cut off by Pete Dunne when Pete Dunne set him on the ropes and just pretty much just pushed him off the ropes where uh, Sam Gradwell landed pretty nasty on his uh, on his lower back on the outside and then Pete Dunne pretty much targeted his lower back, giving him a nice suplex onto the, the ramp and throwing him in the ring and giving him a uh, backdrop or a uh, body slam uh, onto the ropes so his lower back's his lower back hit the bottom, or uh, hit the hit the ring apron while like his legs are tangled on the ropes. Uh, yeah, so you know, hit him with the body slam and uh, pin them one, two, three. So uh, Pete Dunne kind of gets one out of nowhere. Uh, but that, you know, again, you know, you would you wouldn't expect the body slam to win a match, but considering the story they're telling, I thought it was a great callback uh, to their brawl, especially when they brawl on the ramp. I thought that was great. So I might complain about that, but yeah, Pete Dunne advances the semifinals. Good solid opener there. Enjoyed that. From there on, we go to uh, Mark Andrews versus Joseph Connors in the second quarterfinals match. Uh, this was good. This was fine. This is very similar to the uh, Mark Andrews uh, Dan Maloney match, where Mark Andrews pretty much was just sh shining throughout the entire match, getting the signature spots in. Uh, Joseph Connors did get some offense in, in this match as well, though. Majority, uh, more offense than Dan Maloney did in his match with Mark Andrews. Uh, you know, they did. Uh, they brawled on the outside for a little bit, where uh, uh, Mark Andrews did her Karana onto him. He actually did a. Um, I run off the uh, barricade into a jump on him, and uh, yeah, it was um, it was pretty solid. You know, Justin Connors, like I said, against Moppington, uh, prevented himself from um, going into steps and uh, gave Mark Andrews a nice uh, uh, tope into not tope a um, drop toe hole. Sorry, my mind went blank there for a second. Act, I don't know why, but a nice drop toe hole into the steps, which you know took Mark Andrews out of commission for a little bit. But uh, Mark Andrews came back, hit a uh, shooting, not a shooting star, a, uh, yeah, a shooting star press uh, to secure the win for the 1-2-3 to, to advance to the semifinals. So uh, that was a good match. Like I said, pretty much just showcased Mark Andrews some more. So it was fun what it was, though. So I enjoyed that. After that, we go on to the third quarterfinals match, which was uh, Trent Seven versus Wolfgang. This was a fun match as well. You know, you have two big guys uh, going at it and pretty much just hammering each other, which is pretty much what they did. They are just throwing, uh, you know, fists back and forth and pretty much having a brawl uh, up into the outside. They would brawl on the outside where uh, Trent would get his upper hand when Wolfgang would actually hit a moonsault off the barricade, but he would uh, land nasty on his knee. Uh, so Trent Seven would target that knee for the majority of the match, really just working on it while uh, Wolfgang was trying to fight back, trying to go up the top rope, but he would, uh, you know, power, or he'd take too long, so Trent Seven would get him down. Uh, Trent Seven hit a nice uh, back fist, followed by a seven-star lariat, which Wolfgang actually kicked out of, so that was a big surprise there. And uh, Wolfgang with the upper hand and actually hit a swanton bomb, which it's called uh, the howling, he calls it, onto uh, Trent Seven's back, because Trent Seven was trying to get up, and as he's trying to get up, uh, Wolfgang hit a swanton uh, for the 1-2-3 victory. So huge shocker there with Wolfgang 
uh, defeating Trent Seven. No one expected to see that coming, but um, that's one of the best parts about these tournaments is you have a handful of surprises, and that was definitely one of them, and uh, definitely the biggest upset tournament by, uh, by by far. So, uh, fun match with Trent Seven and Wolfgang. Really enjoyed that. And then, of course, going to the final uh, quarterfinals uh, round match, which was uh, Tyler Bate versus Jordan Devlin. Uh, Jordan Devlin, I will say, looked a hell of a lot better than he did previous night. Like I said, on day one, I thought he looked absolutely terrible. So here he actually looked pretty good. Um, him and Tyler Bate, you know, put on a pretty uh, solid six or so minute match. Tyler Bate just continues to impress. That man's absolutely awesome. and definitely showcased it here by um, just showing his brute, uh, brute strength when you know when Jordan Devlin went for a crossbody and Tyler uh, just caught him and, uh, you know, just put him in the airplane spin. Did that to Devlin. And, uh, yeah, this was fun. You know, Devlin hit a roundhouse kick, which Tyler B uh, Bates sold it as if his head was busted open. I don't know if he was just faking it or overreacting, but he kind of looked at it like, oh, I'm fine. Then hit the, he went to, you know, they faked out the bang, and went to the pow, and then uh, hit the Tyler driver to a huge pop, by the way. Humongous pop when he hit the Tyler driver, 97 on uh, Jordan Devlin uh, for the 1-2-3 victory. So, uh, Tyler Bates advances to the semifinals. Like I said, you know, pretty good, solid match there from him and Devlin. So, uh, yeah, that was good. From there on, we go to the first semifinals match, which was Pete Dunn versus Mark Andrews. These guys have a storied past and a rivalry, and, uh, you know, it's culminating here in the WWE. And I thought these guys went out there and put on an awesome match here. I thought those two, uh, their styles meshed so well with, you know, Pete Dunn, of course, being the more aggressive, strong style wrestler, or Mark Andrews more the high flyer. So, you know, when you have two completely different styles mesh, I thought they worked perfectly. I thought it worked really well. Pete Dunn looked like, like a million bucks, so did Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews uses an aerial offense to so pretty much try and outmaneuver me. Pete Dunn, but Pete Dunn would catch him in any kind of way, you know, as if, you know, Mark Andrews was doing, was just, you know, jump off the top rope and Pete Dunn would just nail him with a with a jab and pretty much take him out of commission. Really working on the back of Mark Andrews. He actually gave Mark Andrews a suplex onto the apron which put him out and I uh, gave him another suplex onto the ramp and he tried to uh, actually tease the count out victory. Therefore he actually at the nine. Mark Andrews got in the ring in time so it prevented the count out uh, from happening. Uh, you know he Pete Dunn just target the back of Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews would, you know, have a nice little strong comeback. You know, he actually hit a, a reverse, or he hit a uh, Huracurana. He was able to counter the uh, bitter end into a Huracurana, which came out pretty nice. And um, he got a lot of near falls. A lot of near falls in this match, which made it even more better. Uh, and, uh, you know, Mark Andrews actually hit his um, Northern, Northern Lights suplex, followed by a reverse 450, it seemed like. I don't know really what it was. Uh, I thought he was going for a shooting star or a reverse, or a moonsault, sorry. But he actually, you know, did another rotation and kind of like did like a reverse 450, uh, if you want to call it. I'm not exactly sure. So that was a really nice uh, near fall right there. But um, Pete Dunn was able to end it with the, uh, the bitter end uh, for the 1-2-3 to advance to the final. So Pete Dunn. Uh, and Mark Andrews, like I said, put in an awesome match with their, their styles mesh very well and uh, really enjoyed the match between the two of them. Pete Dunne advanced to the finals. So, um, yeah, great match there. Great underdog for Mark Andrews. That was pretty much his entire story throughout this tournament. It was his underdog. And uh, Pete Dunne has just been this monster here the entire time. It's finally shut him down. So, great storytelling that match and really enjoyed it. And, of course, we'll never go to the final semifinal match, which was um, Tyler Bate versus Wolfgang. Uh, this was fun for what it was. It was a very short match again. Um, you know, uh, Tyler Bate uh, was pretty much working, not really working, but uh, he was targeting the leg and the nose because uh, Wolfgang actually, they said he, he broke his nose as map to Trent Seven from the back fist. So, uh, you know, they played that in effect where, you know, he had two pretty much open targets and Tyler Bate just, you know, tacked the, the knee, worked on that a little bit as well as the, um, the nose. But, um, you know, the, the leg definitely played an effect. You know, every time Wolfgang would go to the top rope, he'd either be cut off by Tyler Bate immediately or you'd just take too long to the point where Tyler Bate would, you know, be able to get him off the top rope. So, um, this was enjoyable. This was a good little big man, little man match for what it was. Um, I, loved, I liked the ending too where um, Wolfgang went for a fireman's carry. Uh, Tyler Bate got out of it and was uh, actually able to hit the Tyler Driver 97 for the 1-2-3. Uh, just finish really came out of nowhere, but you know what? Uh, finishes like that are sometimes the best finishes you can have, so that definitely was one of them. Uh, so Tyler Bate advances the finals with face Pete Dunne. Like I said, a good big man, little man match between the two of them. And then after the match, of course, Pete Dunne comes out and attacks um, Tyler Bate to um, pretty much you know set up their, their match in the main event. So I uh, just added more heat on to Pete Dunne, and it made the fans you know give sympathy to uh, Tyler Bate. So I enjoyed the beatdown to uh, set up the main event.
And from there on, we go to a uh, bonus match, a non uh, tournament match where Nello comes out. He goes once again, another tournament that's forgotten about him. First, it was a Cruiserweight Classic, now it's this. Uh, he should be automatically crowned the UK champion just because he's Neville. Pretty much what's going on and on and on. And his opponent is none other than the debuting Tommy End, who is now Aleister Black in NXT. But here, he actually used Tommy End, so that was pretty cool of them to let him use Tommy Yen here. Uh, very excited to see him. I've always been a huge fan of Tommy Yen since I started watching him uh, about two years ago. So I was very excited to see him face Neville. Uh, this match was fine. You know, um, it was pretty fun. Uh, you know, my only complaint kind of was, and it's not really a complaint, but it's, you know, kind of like a, eh, I wish they would have done this, uh, was for uh, Tommy Yen to get more offense in. He really didn't do much. I understand Neville's building for his Cruiserweight title match, but I feel like um, Tommy Yen definitely should have gotten more in than what he did, but it was still a fun match. Neville looked really good, you know, he was playing that aggressive heel, and Tommy Yen was able to showcase his uh, striking and uh, his uh, ag agility in this match, which was, you know, always a purpose when you debut someone is just to showcase their talents, and that's what he did here. He looked really good with his fast strikes and just devastating uh, kicks and elbows. He looked he looked great, and Neville uh, looked really good as well. So it was a fun match. Neville wins with the, uh, the Red Arrow. So, um, yeah, enjoyable match. It was cool to see Neville and definitely awesome to see Tommy and make his debut. So, win-win if you ask me. And then from there on, we go to Finn Balor coming out, pretty much promoting the title match coming up, which will lead into the WWE United Kingdom Championship Tournament Finals for the UK Championship, Pete Dunne versus Tyler Bate. Now, this match had such a big match feel to it. This felt like a legitimate world title match. That's how big of a deal they made it seem like Cole was firing this match up. This felt like a big match. I cannot say any universal title match has felt the way this title match did. This felt like a real world title match, and that made it even more exciting. Uh, the crowd was just the way it presented itself. It it was a big match feel, and I loved every single second of it. That's the best. Uh, title match you can deliver is when it has a big match feel to it and it felt legitimate even though it was a two-day tournament where this title just got introduced out of nowhere it feels like it means a lot more than the universal title has in its six months it's been around so um, kudos for them for making the title seem very very important in this final round match and Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate went out there and had one hell of a match these two went out there and just threw fists and just beat the hell out of each other even though Tyler Bate had, uh, had tape on his arm and he was selling the uh, the arm at, because I think they said it was like an AC, not tear, but like dislocation or whatever. That's what they're selling it as. But Tyler Bate would just, you know, push it back in or whatever. Uh, but these two went at it. Tyler Bate had a nice suicide dive on the outside. Him and Pete Dunne just absolutely hammering each other with his fist. Had a nice brawl. Good back and forth action. This is a great uh, way. This is like, this is how you should do your babyface versus heel title match. This is the best way you can do it. Tyler Bate has everyone in the crowd behind him while everyone just hates Pete Dunne and does not want him to win. That's how you need to build your title match. It's not where it's 50-50 or whatever. You need everyone to dislike the heel and everyone to be behind the babyface. And that's exactly what they had here. And that's why it made the match even better than what, you know, than it already was. You just had all the elements added into one and it made for an awesome match. Definitely mat WWE match of the year so far if you ask me. A great storytelling between both these men. A lot of near falls as well, to the point where I didn't know who was going to win. I, I knew it was going to be one of the two, but I didn't know which one. Pete Dunne looked a million bucks, so did Tyler Bate. Uh, Pete Dunne just working on Tyler Bate's arm after a while. Um, just, you know, hammering it, putting in the Kimura. Um, Tyler just showing off his strength as well. You know, he's able to hit Pete Dunne with the airplane spin. But when we put him down, Pete Dunne actually locked him into a triangle choke. But then freaking Tyler Bate lifts him up into a power bomb. Power bombs him down. Just Tyler Bate's so awesome. I can't put this guy over enough. And I've only seen him a handful of times. So it goes to show you how good this guy is, considering I can say he's amazing after only seeing a few of his stuff. And uh, that played great into the match. And of course, you know, like I said, Pete Dunne would put him in the Kimura lock and he would fight out of it. And, you know, he'd actually lift out of it. But uh, Pete Dunne actually wrapped his legs around him. But, Pete, uh, but Tyler Bate was able to... Um, out of power, Pete Dunne, lift them up into a brain buster, followed by two spin kicks, followed by the Tyler Driver 97 for the 1, 2, 3 victory. And Tyler Bate is your first ever inaugural WWE United Kingdom Champion. Well deserved after the performances he's had in this tournament. By far the MVP, if you ask me. Him, Pete Dunne, and Mark Andrews, in my opinion, definitely the best performances in this entire tournament. Uh, but you had two stars being made, which was Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. Tyler Bate definitely was portrayed as this, you know, great baby face. And, you know, Pete Dunne was just 
villainize as this monster heel by attacking Sam Gradwell and just taking people out and just the way his aggressiveness was displayed. Um, you have two stars right there and you have a great feud right there just, that's been that's just ready to emerge into something very special throughout the year if you ask me with Tyler Bate and uh, Pete Dunne. So phenomenal tournament finals like I said definitely that big match feel. Uh, every element you had the great comeback with Tyler Bate uh, with a surprise victory of him on the title overcoming the, the monster heel of Pete Dunne. Uh, just a phenomenal main event and I can't put this match over enough. Definitely need to check it out if you guys haven't. And uh, yeah, of course, at the coordination of uh, Tyler Bate with uh, Triple H, William Regal, Finn Balor, and uh, and Fit Finley as well. So that was really cool for them to come in there, coordinate him, the confetti come down. It's an awesome moment for Tyler Bate to an awesome main event to a great show. Like I said, day two I thought was awesome. I thought it was a really fun show. Uh, the quarterfinals were you know were just good. The semifinals were great, and uh, of course your final round match was uh, was very very awesome. Really enjoyed that. So. Uh, yeah, that'll do it for my day two review, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my day one video as well, reviewing that day. And, um, yeah, if you guys did, leave, uh, leave a like below. Leave your guys' comments in the comment section if you guys would like. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching the video.